Let's take a look at a model of the ventricles in the brain. The purpose of the ventricles is to allow CSF, cerebrospinal fluid, to flow throughout the brain. And CSF is a clear, watery fluid that brings nutrients into the brain and takes away waste products. So first we'll look at this from a lateral view, with this being the anterior side, this being posterior, and then we'll turn it around and look at it A to P. The first structure that we notice here is this large hook shaped, which is called the lateral ventricle. We have a left and a right lateral ventricle. And the lateral ventricle can further be subdivided into the anterior horn of the left lateral ventricle, posterior horn of the left lateral ventricle, and the inferior horn of the left lateral ventricle. In between the two ventricles, you see this interesting shape that kind of reminds you of a duck head. The duck's head is the third ventricle. The reason it's called third ventricle is because the lateral ventricles are sometimes called ventricle one and two. So the duck head is the third ventricle. Below the duck head, we have this long, thin neck that drops down in between the lateral ventricles and that is called the cerebral aqueduct. The cerebral aqueduct connects the third ventricle with the fourth ventricle, which is this structure all the way at the bottom. The fourth ventricle has a lateral aperture on each side. So if I take the same model, turn it to the front, we have a distinctly different view. From the anterior view, I can see my lateral ventricles. Here's that anterior horn and the inferior horn of my left and right lateral ventricles. Here's the beginning of my third ventricle, which was that duck head structure that actually looks like a very small, thin area from this angle. In between, we have the interventricular septum, which connects the lateral ventricles with the third ventricle. Inferior to the third ventricle, we have the cerebral aqueduct, which connects the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle.